Hello and welcome again to Flipped Harbor for Algebra 2. In this video we're going to be talking about circles. Our objectives for this lesson are to identify the equation for a circle, graph a circle given its equation, we're going to take a look at writing the equation of a circle when its center is given and its radius, and then writing the equation of a circle given its center and one point on the circle. The outline for this video will take a look at some general equations for circles, We'll talk about graphing a circle. We'll talk about the domain and range of circles. And then we're going to end with finding the equation for a circle given its center and a point on the circle. Now here we see three basic equations, very general, we don't see any numbers plugged in. Three basic equations for circles. The top equation, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, very basic equation for a circle that has a center at the origin, 0, 0, and a given radius. The second equation is a little more specialized version, or maybe you could, should think about the first equation as a very specialized version of the bottom one. If we want to move that center around so that it's not at the point 0, 0 anymore, we use the second equation. Now the center for the circle in the second equation is the point h, comma, k. Now what you need to notice is that in both binomials, it is minus, x minus h and y minus k, but our point is h comma k. Now the bottom one really is what we get if we foil out these binomials, combine like terms, bring everything over to one side, but we know that it's a circle because we see this positive x squared term, this positive y squared term, and same coefficient. It's that combination of both the x squareds and y squareds being positive and that same coefficient on both of them that tells us that it's a circle. If I want to move from this third equation up to the second equation, which is much easier to graph with, I do this by completing the square. Now, you should be well aware how to complete the square, and even how to complete the square when we see two different variables, x and y. Now, let's talk about graphing a circle. If it's not in this center radius form, which this one is, then you want to complete the square to put it in that form. Trust me, it is so much easier to graph if it's in the center radius form than in some other generic form. So, this one is in this center radius form. The first thing I want to do is identify where my center is. So, I see this x minus 2. So, this 2 right there is my x coordinate for my center. The fact that I don't see anything with the y means that I have to assume it's 0. That means that my y coordinate for my center is 0. So, my center is at the point 2, 0. So, I'll just go ahead and mark that. And now this 4, it's not my radius, it's actually my radius squared. So that means that my radius is 2. Now, if I stop and think, okay, if I have a center at 2, 0, and a radius of 2, that means that my farthest to the left point is at the origin. My farthest to the right point is over here at 4. My farthest up point is two units above it. My farthest down point is two units below that center. So that's like the top, bottom, left, and right of my circle. And then what I need to do, this isn't going to be real pretty, but I need to go ahead and draw my circle that connects those four points. Not too pretty, but not too difficult either. Okay, now let's talk about the domain and range of a circle. Now here again, I have an equation for a circle. I have my center is at not 6, 4. My center is at negative 6, comma, negative 4. Because when we see x plus, that means that our h value is negative. When I see y plus, that means my k value is negative. Now I can also read off my radius pretty easily. 25 is a nice number to take the square root of. My radius is 5. Now what that tells me is that from my center 
my leftmost point is 5 units to the left. So my leftmost point is negative 11, comma, negative 4. My rightmost point, that's 5 units to the right of the center, would be at negative 1, comma, negative 4. Okay, now I can really easily identify my domain. My domain is the set of all x such that x is between and includes negative 11 and negative 1. So there's my domain for this relationship. It's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. It's a relation. It does have a domain and a range. Now my bottom point, the bottom point of the circle, I'm just going to move five units down from my center. So it's at negative six, comma, negative nine. My uppermost point, the top point of my circle, I just move five units up. So it's at negative six, comma, one. So now again, pretty easy to see what my range is. My range is the set of all y such that it's between negative nine, and 1. So pretty easy when I just go through the process of figuring out what my center is, what my radius is, and then figuring out my extreme points, my leftmost point, my rightmost point, my top point, and my bottom point. Domain and range, pretty easy. Now let's go ahead and find an equation when we know the center and a point on the circle. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that this point is not straight left, it's not straight right, does not share an x value with the, um, excuse me, doesn't share a y value with the center. It's not straight up, it's not straight down, it doesn't share an x value with the center. So this is some point that's off at some angle. So actually my first step is to figure out what the radius is. And I do this by just using my distance equation from algebra, my distance equation between two points. Now when I do that, notice there's no square root here. Okay? Instead of actually using the square root, which is, you know, this comes to us from Pythagorean's theorem, I didn't bother with the square root because in my equation, I don't have r, I have r squared. So why take the square root to just go ahead and square it again anyway? So r squared is equal to the difference in my x value. So I take my center point x value minus my point x value. I take my center point y value minus my point y value. Now you can switch these up. You could have the point minus the center point. Doesn't really matter. Just don't switch up x and y values. Negative 1 minus 2, well, that's negative 3. Squared is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. Squared, that's 16. And I find out that my radius would be, tw would be 5, but I didn't bother to take that square root. So I have r squared equals 25. So now I'm just going to assemble my center radius form. So I have x plus 1, because my h value is negative, squared plus y minus 9 squared equals 25. Okay, well, you know what? That's it. It's time for you to try some of this stuff on your own. I'll see you in class, and I'll see you online.